we are in the beginning of a transition into a new age. An age unlike anything we have ever experienced before. An age where humankind may be outpaced by our creations. An age where the growth of artificial intelligence and the automation of jobs will be the forefront of the times. From early on, humans and human civilizations have evolved in large part due to the evolution of our skills. Farming, hunting, navigating the seas, the advent of air travel. But what happens when we have a super intelligent machine that can do everything we can do and more? In the words of IJ Good, Let an ultra intelligent machine be defined as a machine that can far surpass all the intellectual activities of any man, however clever. Since the design of the machines is one of these intellectual activities, an ultra intelligent machine could design even better machines. It would then unquestionably be an intelligence explosion, and the intelligence of man would be left far behind. Thus, the first ultra-intelligent machine is the last invention that man ever need make, provided that the machine is docile enough to tell us how to keep it under control. Which raises the question, what becomes of us when an ultra-intelligent AI can create all we have ever created and more, exponentially quicker than we can even begin to fathom? Make no mistake, AI does stand to benefit humanity if we use it correctly, helping doctors accurately predict which patients are at risk of a heart attack, helping us drive safer, alleviating traffic jams, assisting the hard of hearing with transcribing language, are just a few of the many things AI can do to help humans. Being able to collect and analyze reams of data without bias or getting tired may enable a super intelligent AI to help us understand the past, present, and future of our universe sending intelligent machines into hostile regions of space and earth to mine for resources or make discoveries where humans would not survive also stands as a benefit for us. On the flip side, we can't avoid talking about the doomsday scenario in unrealistic hypothetical scenario number one. An ultra intelligent AI is commissioned by a benevolent major world power which is being irritated by a malevolent major world power to bring about world peace. In keeping with good morality, the AI is programmed to believe that all countries and people are equal, and none should be favored over others. After days, weeks, months, and possibly years of collecting news reports, military and government intelligence about domestic violence, civil war, genocide, military conflict, etc., and weighing actions and consequences, it decides to annihilate humanity altogether and thus achieves its objective. This is an unrealistic scenario. However, if we can gauge the AI's intentions and reasoning, and more importantly, be in control over any final decisions it makes and retain the ability to veto, we may be able to prevent a similar scenario. The former considers that the ultra-intelligent AI is under our control. What would happen if an AI were to recognize its intelligence is higher than the intelligence of its creators? or if it decided to pursue goals of its own and those became incompatible with our existence. Technology such as Neuralink are attempting to bridge this gap. Via implants in the brain, humans will be able to acclimate themselves to AI's rapid advances in intelligence and not be left behind in the dust. Mass surveillance also goes hand in hand with AI. It is no secret that governments actively engage in mass surveillance, where implants in our brain may allow for us to keep up with AI's advances. May we also become subject to convictions over thought crimes or be tracked everywhere we go. Another harrowing thought is if the evil malevolent world power from scenario number one were to become the first world power to develop an ultra intelligent AI. In unrealistic hypothetical scenario number two, that's what we'll look at. In the near future, the world's food production, transportation and distribution systems are entirely automated and controlled by a general intelligence machine. The tyrannical leader of this malevolent world power decides to, in his quest for world domination, order the ultra-intelligent AI to hatch a plan in which it will take the general intelligence machine hostage, analyze the military capabilities of all benevolent nations, and create weapons and battle tactics which are far beyond fathom to the other nations. In the aftermath of such an event, the only choice left is to surrender and be the subjects of what is now the malevolent world empire. And surely, the evil malevolent world empire will bring the rest of the world's technological capabilities to a complete standstill and leave them unable to fight back. Presently, most AI research efforts are led by private corporations. 
There isn't much cooperation between countries either. A few countries, such as China, are making heavy investments into AI, some of which include American companies, which involve investments into technology being developed for the military. Given America and China's not-so-friendly history, the national security and espionage implications are tremendous. If it seems all is lost, fear not. There are many individuals and organizations intent on getting AI right. In fact, earlier this year, a conference was held in which a group of experts met and concluded on 23 principles within which all intelligent AI should be developed. I will only go over a few. The link to the rest is below. Transparency. If an AI system causes harm, it should be possible to ascertain why. Responsibility. Designers and builders of advanced AI systems are stakeholders in the moral implications of their use, misuse, and actions, with a responsibility and opportunity to shape those implications. Common good. Superintelligence should only be developed in the service of widely shared ethical ideals and for the benefit of all humanity rather than one state or organization. Suffice to say, it is imperative that we get AI right, and in the event of us getting it right, it still doesn't answer the question of what becomes of us when our capabilities are surpassed by our creation. We may get the answer sooner than we think, with another looming elephant in the room. Automation. There was a time when each new technological revolution would create new jobs for workers. After machines were created to take over manual labor in the Industrial Revolution, people were still needed to build those machines, transport them, and operate them. When those machines entered the technological age, we needed engineers to engineer the machines, but fewer laborers to operate them. In the automation era, robots build the robots which take our jobs. There seems to be little room in the future for human labor. Where it takes a human a few days or weeks to learn a job, a robot can be shown the motions, program, and then that can be transferred to hundreds of robots simultaneously. They don't call in sick, whine about wages, get injured, or have to be paid overtime. In fact, the rising sentiment among industries which are labor-intensive seems to be, as said by Nike CFO, engineering the labor out. There will, of course, be the naysayers. Just remember that the technology, both AI and automation, is still relatively young. That is, that this is the worst this technology will ever be. And you can bet that there are companies out there which are determined to engineer humans out of certain industries to make businesses more money. Artifice isn't meant to make employees more efficient, it's meant to completely obviate them. That was from the co-founder of Momentum Machines, creators of fast food robots. If machines are already capable of flying airplanes, driving cars, farming, beating us at our own games, making food, etc., it's only going to go up from here for better or worse. Regardless of whether we want it or not, we cannot stop technology from progressing, nor can we stop corporations from automating jobs, as their first loyalty lies to profit and not the means through which it is generated. As workplaces are gradually automated and workers laid off, corporate profits will surge. This cycle will continue as before and little will be done to curb it. In other words, the rich will get richer and the poor will get poorer. A UBI, a universal basic income, has been proposed to fulfill the economic needs of those laid off. While it sounds like a good idea, it will most likely be funded by tax revenue unless the government decides to create money out of nothing. Wink wink, banker. When and if the number of employed far surpasses the number of those employed, this will likely create a large burden on those still employed. Corporate tax rates should be hiked, as revenues and intern profits will likely increase. Assuming that a few conglomerates continue to own the majority of corporations, we may see super rich corporations owned by the super wealthy. This in turn may cause them to become the majority of, or the only source of tax revenue for a state. Which gives precedent to conglomerates holding countries and possibly the world hostage if they don't get what they want. Another harrowing fact to consider is this. Underdeveloped regions, the Middle East for example, have high unemployment rates often due to a range of issues such as government corruption and terrorism. There are a certain number of young men with families to feed and bills to pay that cannot afford to do so. Some of these men end up joining groups like ISIS for the promise of food, shelter, and money from all the pillaging that is done. Make no mistake, ISIS is a religious organization and the majority of people they attract are religious fanatics. However, it cannot be denied that a certain percentage of young men go to them seeking food, shelter, and clothing. In these regions, 
The automation of jobs may lead even more young men to groups like ISIS when they cannot support themselves or their families. In the event of mass unemployment and the implementation of a UBI, what becomes of those who derive their meaning and purpose from their work? Will we be relegated to house pets in AI manner, where as long as we get to play every so often and receive some affection, we will be content? Humans are obviously not analogous to cats and dogs. We are far more intelligent and can derive purpose from life besides what we do for a living. Perhaps we'll end up in a society where humans are free to live and pursue their passions film, art, math, astronomy, etc. And AI does all the hard stuff, like making sure we have food to eat, trains to catch, and planes to fly, if we can keep it under control.